If you've been trying to emulate PS2 games on Android, you've probably heard of Aetherus X2. But things have changed a lot recently. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Netherus X2 Classic version 2.0, which has just received a major update. And honestly, it's now the best way to play PS2 games on Android. So what makes it better? Netherus X2 Classic is based on an earlier build of Aetherus X2 version 3668, which means no baked in ads, better compatibility with certain games and often smoother performance. The newer Aetherus X2 builds like 4248 introduced ads and had some performance complaints, which is why a lot of people are switching back to this quote unquote classic version. The latest Netherus X2 classic update version 2.0 brings in tons of improvements like updated widescreen and no interlacing patches, texture dumping, better controller support, and dynamic game database enhancements for more stable performance across a wide range of games. Whether you're on a low-end device or just want the cleanest PS2 experience, Nethers X2 Classic is absolutely worth installing. And in this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to get it set up and running smoothly. I'll be using my Xiaomi Mi 9T, a pretty old phone with low-end specs with a PS4 controller, but the steps apply to most models modern Android phones. Now let's get started. First head over to the official Nether 2 Classic GetUp page. I'll leave the link to this page in the video description. You want to go for the latest release, scroll down to the assets section, tap on the latest version. As of this video, it's version 2.0 and wait for the download to finish. If you see a warning that the file might be harmful, don't worry. This is standard for third party APKs. Go ahead and confirm the download. Once downloaded, install Nether 2 but we we don't want to open it yet. We need to prepare some files first. Go to your preferred file manager. On your internal storage, create a folder named something like PS2 folder. Inside this folder, place your PS2 BIOS files and game ROMs. The game ROMs are usually in ISO format. I should also add that since the PS2 files are copyright protected, I can't show you where to get these files, so a simple Google search will help. Now go ahead and open Nether X2. First, we want to choose a performance preset. The best option is the optimal defaults, as it will have the best game compatibility, but on the other hand, it may not perform well on devices slower than a Snapdragon 845. So for low-end devices, Devices like mine, the fast profile might improve frame rates at the expense of breaking games and other problems. Since I have a low end device, I'm going with the fast slash unsafe defaults, but otherwise, you want to go with the optimal one. You can also reset your profile or apply a profile for a certain game. I'll show you how to do it further in the video. Set emulation screen orientation to landscape, set aspect ratio to widescreen. You can also change your theme. For GPU renderer, Vulkan has the best performance, but on the other hand, if you encounter any visual glitches, you want to go with OpenGL. The upscale multiplier increases internal resolution. I suggest starting with 1x for low-end phones. You can go higher for better graphics quality, but I don't recommend to change it for now. Hit next, select import BIOS, then navigate to your PS2 folder and select the BIOS file. Once imported, tap on your BIOS and hit next. For adding a game directory, tap on the plus icon, navigate to the same PS2 folder and select it. Tap use this folder and grant access. The emulator will now scan and add your games. Before modifying any configurations, we are going to download game covers. Tap the hamburger menu on the top left corner, select download covers, go to this GitHub page. Again, I will put the link in the description below. Copy the cover art URL, 
go back to NetherSX2 and paste the URL and hit download. Covers will now load automatically. You can also switch from list view to grid view by tapping the icon on the top right corner. For controller setup, open the menu and select controller settings. Go to touch screen, change the touch screen controller view to dual analog pad. Scroll down and enable hide with external controller. This option hides the touch screen controller when an external controller like your PS4 or Xbox controller is detected. Now if you use a physical controller, go to controller port 1, select automatic mapping. If you use a gamepad, the emulator should detect your controller automatically. However, if the app doesn't recognize your controller, as it happened to me, you'll need to map the buttons manually. In order to map buttons to your controller, just choose the button from the emulator and press it on your controller. You want to do this for all the buttons and you're good to go. Now head back to the menu and select app settings. In the general tab, check enable patch codes. Scroll down, enable show FPS and show speed for monitoring performance. In the system tab, no need to change anything. I should also add that in order to reset your performance profile, you can tap the three dots on the top right corner and choose either optimal defaults or fast defaults. This applies to all games. I'll show you how to change the per game settings later in the video. In the graphics tab, you can change the upscaler to whatever works for you since I always test with different resolutions and my device is low end, I'll keep it at 1x. Scroll down and check enable widescreen patches and no interlacing patches. Now let's start the game. As you can see, my game is glitched and I can barely play it. That's because the emulator is currently using the fast defaults performance profile. So I need to change that to the optimal defaults. So I'm going to stop the game by pressing back or using the back gesture and hit the exclamation icon. Remember, this icon is for the per game settings, meaning it only affects this one game, not the other games. Right next to it is the gear icon, which represents the global settings. Anything you change there applies to all games. So after pressing the per game settings icon, I want to go to the general tab and select optimal settings. As you can see, the visual glitches are fixed, but keep in mind, changing defaults will also reset your graphics settings. So I should go back to the perp game settings graphics tab and reapply everything we said earlier. Now the game is showing in widescreen just like we want. If you're experiencing low FPS, you can lower down the upscale multiplier. And finally about save states. If you go to the pause menu of the app and hit save states, then choose one of the slots for your save state, the game will have a snapshot of that exact moment in the game. So if you get killed or go somewhere else or anything bad happens, you can just load that save state and get right back to where you were. And that's it. If this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe for more emulator guides. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.